This man, Al-Masih al-Dajjal, Rasul Sallallahu told us, will cause fitna to all people with everything that Allah has given him of powers. Baby, you can call me a Superman. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your boy Jesse Keegan. And your girl Fanny Lungo. And we are Fanny Jesse. So right about now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna do another reaction, and this one right here was suggested by a lot of people as usual. And they say that we should go react to the battle against that the Jal. Hope I pronounce that well. The false messiah. So without any further ado, guys, let's get it. There hasn't come an affliction, a trial, greater from the time of Adam until the end of time. A trial more vicious, more harsher, more deceiving than the fitna of Dajjal. And the Prophet says, All prophets warn their people about him. And I am the last of the prophets. And you are the last of the nations. So he will come from you. There's no way about it. He will come amidst your time. Ad-Dajjal. Literally in Arabic, the word Ad-Dajjal means the liar, the deceiver. Ad-Dajjal. Dajjal. In every way that you can think of lies, all of its forms, Ad-Dajjal will have all these forms. And the worst, the most dangerous thing Ad-Dajjal will have is the psychological deception. Dajjal, the worst, I mean, what's so bad? I mean, we've had many wars before and Muslims have been wiped out in countries and places before, but this Dajjal, he doesn't wipe out or take over the rule or authority or power in the world really by weapons of mass destruction or you know, all that stuff. He takes it over by the psychological war. And what do we live in today? What kind of wars do you think today are the strongest and most dangerous wars? It's not the wars of blood, the mass destruction. No, it is the ideological wars that we are living now. You could be living in the most peaceful country and through the internet and television, our youth, our Muslim youth are being destroyed mentally. Psychologically, you look at the evil and you think it's good, and it comes to you with a smile. And our youth think it's okay until religion is looked at as a restriction rather than a protection. And we're not going to dwell too much on that, but what I do want to let you know is that the Dajjal will not come until there are prerequisites, there are certain occurrences that are going to happen before the Dajjal comes out. And this man, a Dajjal, will come out at a time where the world is ready to accept him in his Dajjal, in his deception. We'll find followers. A Dajjal. Rasul Sallallahu called him Al Masih Al Dajjal. Why? The word Al Masih, the one wiped, wiped off. Because referring to one of his eyes, it looks like it's wiped. The light has gone away from it. It's dark and he can't see with it. One eye he can't see. And it will look like it's flat. Like a grape that has its liquid sucked out of it. The Jal has one of his eyes obliterated, like as in wiped out. It is covered. Mamsuhul Ain. Maktubun Baina Ainehi Kafir. On his forehead is written Kafir. Every believer can read it, whether he's literate or illiterate. The Prophet وسلم, described him, his hair will be curly. His legs will be arced. He walks a little different. He's stubby, strongly built. He will be young in age. He's not old, probably in his mid thirties. He's red skinned, meaning he's more reddish in color when you look at him. He's not tall, he's short, but his body 
is very stocky, it's huge. Like when you look at him, you say, well, this is, he is a huge man and his face looks rough. And his forehead is wide. Ajla al jabha His forehead is wide. His chest is wide. Wide shoulders. His right eye looks like it's been wiped off. Like that grape. The right eye he can't see. He can only see with his left. And this eye doesn't look like it's poking out, nor does it look like it's hollow. It just looks, as I said, like a dry piece of grape. His left eye has got an extra piece of meat on it. So it looks like it's got a piece of extra meat either underneath or on top of it. So Rasul is describing him in detail here. And one of his other descriptions is that he is impotent. He, can, he cannot have children. He cannot have children. Nor does he get married. These are some of his detailed descriptions which Prophet told us about. And subhanallah, before he comes, three years will happen like this. In the first year, Allah Rabbul Izza will order the sky to hold back a third of its rain. So a third of the water of the rain will be held back. And the second year, two thirds will be held back. And the third year, there will be no rain. So a drought and famine has already gripped mankind. And then this man comes, the Dajjal. With him, a river of fire and a river of water. And he enters into a village amidst the people. And he says, do you believe in me? I am your Lord. And when they believe, he tells the sky rain and rain comes. Tells the earth, produce your produce and it will produce its produce. This man, Al-Masih Al-Dajjal, Rasul Azam told us, will cause fitna to all people with everything that Allah has given him of powers. He will make rain come down as he wills wherever he wants it to come. And he'll deny it from the people he doesn't want to have rain. He can revive the land with crops and plantation and he can cause another land to be dead and never have crops and plantation. So no food for its people. And many other powers which Allah has given him in order to test the people as one of the final tests for mankind towards the end of the last time. He is also called Al-Masih, not only because of the, the eye that looks like it's been wiped off, but also the word Masih in Arabic means that the one who will spread out through the world. He will go everywhere in the world. He will reach every place in the world and occupy it except for two places, Mecca and Medina. Al-Masih calls it, Al-Masih al-Dajjal calls it Thiba. Thiba means Medina and Mecca. He will not be able to set foot, he will not be able to go into it. But he will reach its borders and he'll try to deceive the people who are in there. He will go to a dead person, tell a person, a Bedouin, if I bring your parents back to life, would you believe that I am your Lord? He will say, yes, he says, rise. And two shayateen will come in the image of his parents and will say, son, listen to him, he's your Lord. Do you see Iman is shaken to its core? How do you not believe your eyes? He'll say that I am God. Ana ilahukum. And then they'll say, what proof do you have? He said, only God can raise the dead. He said, okay, what if I raise your parents from the dead? They said, yes, we'll believe your God. So he will be able to get the jinns, the shayateen, to work for him and they will speak to them. And so the people, non-Muslim people and the weak Muslims will follow him. He will tell the earth, spit out your treasures. The hadith says like, be, like bees, gold and silver and diamonds will come out of the ground and follow him. Rasul Sallallahu kept on speaking about Ad-Dajjal that day. The companions said we feared because he told us that his time was so near, so close that we started to feel as if he's just behind the trees somewhere. And his time is coming very close. Ad-Dajjal will live for 40 days as we said. In the first day, it'll be as long as a year, the second day as long as a month, third day as long as a week, and the rest of the day is normal. And there will be one man who, who, who will do something. Rasul Sallallahu says, I know him, and he is the best man in, on that day. He will come warning the people, saying he is not God, he is not God, he is a Dajjal, he is the Antichrist. And they will say, what are you saying about our Lord? So they'll bring him to him. And he will say, I am your God, look what I can do. 
He said, you are the liar. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi told us about you. So he'll bring a saw and he'll saw him in half. And then he'll walk between the two body parts and the man will come and rise, will become alive again. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi told us he'll be able to do that once, just once. And the man said, the Dajjal says to him, now do you believe I am God? And he says, now I believe more that you are not God, but you are actually a Dajjal. Because you cannot do this to me again. And truly, he will not be able to do that again. He will throw him into his fire. And Rasul Sallallahu tells us he will have something that looks like a fire and something that looks like water. He said it's an illusion. The fire is his water and his water is his fire. Go to the fire to drink from it if you see it. And the man vanishes, disappears. Rasul Sallallahu says, he is the best, he is a real man, the best of men in that day, who tries to call the people away from the worship of a Dajjal. After the 40 days have ended, the Muslims will be praying behind Al Mahdi, almost about to pray Salat al Dhuhr. Also in the Hadith in Sahih Muslim, you will find it. They'll be praying in Asham in Syria, in Syria in particular, in Damascus, in Dimashq, in a mosque called Al Masjid al Minar al Bayda. Rasul Sallallahu named it the one with the white minaret. They call it that name now in Damascus. It's got many white minarets and it, it really shines and lights up very well. At this point, when they are inside this encampment, Allah Rabbul Izzah sends them their solution. Isa, the son of Mary, will descend. How will he descend, Ya Rasul? His hand will be on the wings of two angels. He will be covered in two garbs, both tinged slightly yellow. There, there will be a small a group of army praying with Al-Mahdi in that masjid. As they were about to play, suddenly Isa alayhi salam descends, the real Isa alayhi salam. And the two angels will be carrying him on each side, he'll be wearing two garments, and his beard will be long, it will be black, and his hair will be long and black. It will be not curly and not dead straight, and it will, it will reach his shoulders as if it is dropping with water, as if water is seeping up the that's, that's his look, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And his cheeks will be red, red, red cheeks, and he's white in color. So he is a Isa alayhi salam, very handsome man. Will come down and he will enter, he will enter this masjid. And the Muslims will notice him. And Al-Mahdi will walk back so that Isa alayhi can pray Iman. And he will say, Every nation has its own Imam which Allah has appointed and you are the appointed Imam of this nation. So remain in your position. So Isa comes down for a different purpose. And he prays behind Jesus. Al-Mahdi. That's how important Al-Mahdi is. Isa alayhi salam prays behind him. After that in the hadith it says he wipes the face of the Muslims that are in there. And he informs them of their places in Jannah. What they have. They go up to Al-Maqdis to fight the army of the Dajjal. And in Al-Maqdis in Jerusalem, the, the Dajjal would have come with an army with him. He will not know that Isa alayhi salam is with Al-Mahdi and the Muslim army. And they'll enter, they'll, they'll find them on the borders of the Temple of Solomon, as you call it. You know, that's that temple where Maqdis is. That's, that's where Sulaiman alayhi salam had his kingdom built. They will exit and find a Dajjal with his army. A Dajjal, as soon as he sees Isa alayhi salam, he runs away. Rasul sallallahu alayhi salam said, he runs away and he begins to melt. Literally melt. The Dajjal sees Isa alayhi salam. The false Messiah sees the real Messiah. And he runs and Isa alayhi salam chases him. And calling he says, it is written that I owe you one strike. Before Isa alayhi salam lets him melt, Isa alayhi salam follows him with a sword and kills him. So he bleeds and he dies. And he says to the people, if he was a god, how can I kill him? So if he melted and gone and dissolved, they'll think he's a god. But he killed him and he says to prove to the people he is not a god. Allahu A'lam, if whether there is any repentance at that time, people can embrace Islam or not. The news is conflicting. We don't know if the sun has risen yet at that time, because the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi said when the sun rises from the west, no more repentance will be accepted. Or whether there is still time for repentance. If there is time for repentance, only a small amount of people will be there to repent. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Isa alayhi salam will live. Allahu alam for how long? Some narrations say 10 years, others say 40 years. But 
What I do know is that the narrations tell us that he will outlive Al-Mahdi. Al-Mahdi will live for 10 years and he will fill it with justice. As I said before, and Isa will die later on. So Isa will really die finally. At the moment, we believe Isa was risen and he is alive and he'll be returned. They did not kill him, nor did they crucify him, but Allah lifted him to him. In a way we don't understand. Now, whether it's at this time or before this time or close to that time, we don't know. The point is, when the, when the first major sign appears, the other major signs come after each other. Meaning there's not much space between them at all. And we're not talking about years, we're talking about just maybe a few days or probably even in the same day, probably a few weeks. They come after each other very quickly. Signs after signs after signs. Keep in mind, minor signs are still going. More minor signs are happening. The major signs come after each other. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described it like a bead. When you break that string and the beads come out one after the other. So none of them come at the same time together, but they come after each other, but closely after each other, the major signs. It's like the end of the world is running out quickly. The world is coming to its end. It's dying. Like a person on his deathbed. Sickness after sickness after sickness. And if you realize now what's going to be actually be happening is that Al-Mahdi dies. Isa alayhi salam dies. Then during that time or shortly after, the sun rises from where it sets. Rasul Sallallahu says, Tawbah, repentance, returning back to Allah, renewing your faith with Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, will always be accepted. Unless two things happen, one of two things, until the soul reaches the gargling point when you die. Repentance is accepted until the soul reaches the gargling and go like this. And when the sun rises from where it sets, that's the end of time. No, but no more repentance, no more conversion to Islam. Khalas. The way you are is the way you are. Kafir, kafir, Muslim, Muslim. Uh, one who didn't pray, one who didn't pray. One ask, khalas. the way you are is the way you are. The sun will rise like this. Scientific theories at the moment tell us that the universe is changing and the galaxies are changing. And I don't know if you know much about the expansion of the universe. This was a, a fact discovered at the time of Albert Einstein and now it's a fact scientific fact that the universe has been expanding for billions of years this is true and the Quran sort of hints to it some scholars interpret we, we built the sky and the sky is expanding the point is they say it's going to reach a point where it will stop and then there will be something what they call a big crunch or another universe is going to be formed this is what they say non-Muslim scientists say. Nevertheless, what we do know as the Prophet ﷺ told us, the world will change and the universe will crunch and everything will be reversed. So the sun, the direction of the sun that we see will be the opposite way. This also shows that everything in the solar system will be the opposite way. And so the world will reverse and the crunches will happen. For when that sun rises, there is no more repentance. And closely after that, more and more faith is taken away from the world until finally the Qur'an is taken, until the Kaaba is even destroyed and there wouldn't be one single Muslim Muwahid on the face of the earth left. But there are a few more signs before that happens. interesting and again it's scary and stuff like that I mean, knowing that all these things are gonna happen you never know when they like they're gonna happen you get it not tomorrow not today I mean it can happen anytime but as, as he said like when the major probably catastrophe happens they're gonna follow each other but the minor ones are the ones that are happening now which I can't say they do happen I mean, you can you can you can see uh, so much rains. I mean, the world is actually going through. So much rains. Yeah, there's so much flood out there. So much rains. No, so much. Um, it's like the opposite. 
is happening, I should say, there are some places that experience rain and it's and just been dry. Yeah, completely yeah. dry. Yeah, probably, yeah. Well, out there praying for rain. And there are some places that don't experience a lot of rain. Yeah. And there's storms. Like in Australia, there was a part that was really uh, was having winter. So I think it kind of went the opposite. So it was now more of there's so much heat when during winter and during winter sorry like during winter there's there's heat and then during um summer there's winter you get it i mean things are just changing the weather has changed yeah like there's a shift that is going on right now we um, can also testify to that what happened in cyprus and yes we've been here for yes La like a few years but what happened this year was we've been here yeah this year we've been here for like almost like four years to be honest and then what normally happens here when we came here it was actually uh you know it's a semi-arid place i mean there's so much heat going on and whatnot so all of a sudden there's so much rains i don't know out of nowhere and it's still raining too today and even today summer as we speak and it rained out there i mean why and how it doesn't make sense like for real I mean, what the guy was saying is perfectly true. I mean, things are happening, but not not a lot of people take take um, take it seriously. I think people are like, ah, it's just just no. But trust me, a lot yes. of things, yeah, ignorance, yeah. But people but are gonna people get caught that, like people that. People that read, let me say, the Quran, the Bible, mm -hmm. and they take it serious. They know. Yeah, actually, the Bible also speaks of uh, speaks of the same thing, like. The black man is gonna come with a red, uh, uh, red complexion and whatnot, uh, long hair, and blah blah blah. It also speaks of the same. The Bible speaks of the same too. I mean, it's kind of uh, it's it's kind of the same thing that is gonna to happen towards the end times. And if these two different books can talk about the same thing, you yeah. best believe there's some truth. Best believe, yeah, there's some truth in it. Other than that, he spoke about um, false messiah. Yeah, yeah, false. Um, I forgot the name. Oh. Ajit? Uh, no. I forgot, yeah, like like the the name he was talking about. The doll. Huh? The doll. Yes, the jal, the jal or something. The false messiah. The same, even in the Bible, the same I, like. I like how he spoke about the false messiah, and he said whatever the false messiah will be doing will be an illusion. Yeah, an illusion. Yeah. I think we already see that with um magic tricks yeah we see that we see that like you know what's happening right now it might not even be like that person i think the false prophet is already here they're there yeah they're already here like they but think no one that has we, claimed to be the messiah yeah yet. no one has claimed to be the messiah I think. but we see these things happening out there people uh, claim to heal other people people claim to do that people claim to be the the prophets and stuff like that i mean there's so many things happening Sometimes I just look at them and laugh and say, ah, this, this is not true. See, but a lot of people fall into that. They tend to follow these people. But it's just an illusion or something, you get it? I mean, people are, people are not, let me, can I use the word walk? Yeah. People yeah. choose to follow things blindly. Blindly, yeah. Yeah. I mean, don't follow things blindly. Question me, this is what I'm saying, like, I normally question everything question everything anything you come across question it i mean you have to know what what is this well what, what, why why are you doing this is this true is this you get it i mean these things are at this particular period and time you have to question a lot of things because we are, we are coming into into the end times and you might find yourself in the wagon if you're not serious i mean if you're not careful i feel like sometimes these the so-called uh, what messiahs Mm -hmm. Remember that the the guy that was from the day. Yeah, yeah. I feel yeah. like some things are staged. Yeah, all this so is staged get, so that they can get audiences. Mm -hmm. But in the video, he made note of the fact that some people among us will be people that will believe in this false messiah that will mm -hmm. come yeah. ask maybe to bring back your parents or whatever the case, mm -hmm. and those people will be inhabited by. The devil? Did he say devil? Did yes, yes, devil? Uh, yeah, a jinn. That's called a jinn. 
I mean, yeah, what she's saying is true. And you see that in movies, so that's yeah. very, very clear. And one thing, guys, anything you see in a movie, trust me, there's some, there's some kind of truth in it. There's hints. There's hints, like they're giving you subliminals in there. You, you just have to be careful when you watch these things. I mean, no, not careful. You need to be keen enough as you watch these things, because what they show us is actually what is going to happen. Remember back you don't in those have days. To believe. Yeah, no, you don't have to believe. Just. Just you know what? Just uh, think about just be keen and uh, put into note. You get like just put it into into um, just just put it in your head. You don't have to believe that that's what is gonna happen. But trust me, as, as, as we as we okay back in those days, we used to see people use the, using cell phone. It came into life, blah blah blah, and all these type of things. You get it? I mean, there's so much things nowadays they're showing in the movies, which it's actually going to happen in the future you get it all these uh, ai's and whatnot these things are going to happen in future maybe some, maybe we're going to have robots probably maybe doing things for us that's already happening yeah it's happening but it's not like vast but it's happening it's right not, now but it will. yeah you get it and it's, it's really bad it's really really bad Anyway guys, if you feel like you'd react to this video in a better way, just give us a thumbs up and don't forget to go down our comment section and tell us exactly what you feel about our reaction and what you think about the video that we've just uh, reacted to, the battle of Dejal. Just let us know in the comment section below, give us your thoughts. What do you think about the end times? You think it's going to come in soon or you think we're already in the end times or you think that the end times is just an illusion, you get it, maybe it's not going to happen, probably this world never 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 does what never ends it resets itself for seven years or something like that just let us know in the comment section or do we die and come back here and then you can i mean there's so much theories out there which some are practical some are practical enough to to uh to understand and stuff like just let us know in the comment section and we're gonna hear you guys and the most important thing guys don't forget to subscribe to our channel the more people subscribing the more give us the motivation to do a lot of videos and to give you better better content and last but not the least we're gonna see you in the next video and peace out